Hey, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Effort of Community Church weekly podcast, a conversation with our pastors and leaders meant to continue encouraging you to know God, know freedom, know purpose, and make a difference. Hey, Effort to Community Church. It's great to be with you once again for our weekly podcast. My name is Matt Swords. We're joined here with Jim Ehrman, our teaching pastor. Say good morning, afternoon, Jim. Good morning, afternoon, Jim. (laughs) It's great to be here with you guys once again. Welcome. Uh, We're going to take some time just to unpack more uh, of the weekend message from this past week. Uh, go into some more in-depth dialogue around some of the nuance yeah. of what was discussed, give you the opportunity to unpack a little bit more. Uh, we wanted to start it off first by talking about the testimony from this oh, yeah, past week. Yeah. Uh, if you're not familiar with Effort to Community Church at all, every week we show a te- testimony from someone within the congregation where they get to expound on like how God has encountered them in their life and and testify to the living God. And, and so we had David Hurst share the testimony this weekend. Jim, you want to yeah. share about that? Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, I can't help but say this, but like, the church I grew up in, if someone gave a testimony, it was mostly about encouragement. Like, oh, look at the goodness of God. So we do that here. And the second thing we do is we believe testimonies build faith. Mm-hmm. And that when faith is built, there is a way to access the work of the Spirit that's different. Now, that may be new to you. Rate us at ask at effort yep, and we'll yep, talk please. about it. But yeah, Dave Hurst, you know, there's something about Dave's testimony, man. Just just him simply saying, I practiced thankfulness. Yeah. I practiced thankfulness. And something began to shift, right? Yeah. First in his perspective, then in actual yeah. moment of manifestation that was pretty amazing, right? Yeah, I love the fact that he ended with that, like, is there anything that precipitated it? And there yeah. was, you know, for a year, he was just thanking God every day. And so often when you hear the testimony and all you're hearing is the this one random weekend at worship, God just electrified me. He, he touched me and really sparked, you know, new life. Right. I feel like I've been born again all over again, as he said. Um, and it's easy to disconnect that from everything that led up to that moment right. and think, wow, God just sovereignly decided to touch David's life, where it actually began a year before where the Lord prompted him That's to right. live out of thankfulness. Yeah, and it cultivates soil. I always say this, the art of thankfulness first requires the discipline of thankfulness. We forget that when wow. you see a brilliant artist, it seems so natural to them, but if you really unpack their story, mm-hmm. it began as a discipline. And we know, I mean, we're not dummies, we know that being thankful at first is just a choice, right? It's a discipline to say, I will find something today to be thankful right. about. But slowly that discipline becomes an art yeah. and then it becomes a breakthrough stuff. Yeah. Just yeah. a subconscious way of thinking about it. Oh everything. man, it shifts stuff, it shifts yeah. stuff, right? Um, anyway, mm-hmm. so, word, mm-hmm. and the focus was really diving deeply into the prayer of Jonah while he was in the belly of the fish yeah. that caused what I believed that the the Lord released Jonah, mm-hmm. you know, for them to, for him to then continue his mission. Right. And I think um, really precipitated what precipitated that was his humbleness and his returning to the Lord while in the whale. But right. so uh, there are a number of points you made. And but it began with a really interesting lead in the stories that you told of yeah. just like the world's most dangerous job. Yeah, the tuna and, cowboy. Yeah. And so I love that. Uh, you're welcome to spend more time talking about that if you like. But I love how you took the Bartlett story, Bartlett, yeah, right? Bartlett, yeah. And and kind of the details of his experience and superimpose that over Jonah. That's that, right, man. You know, and, and just kind of like it really brought the word, which is easy to read, you know, verse upon verse and just move on to this like relatability experience yeah. that that really captured everyone. And then you were able to lay out your three observations. So yeah. artfully done, it was masterful, really appreciate that. But want to invite you to just dialogue more around. Yeah, you know, I, um, I, I, I whenever you're teaching, you read a passage over and over in the weeks leading up. And I kept reading and I was assigned just the prayer. We're talking chapter two, verses one through 17, the prayer in the belly. And when you've read it probably 25 times like I did, you sit and you begin to say like, oh, Lord, would you give me the gift of reawakening the imagination to the context it was being prayed in, not just the content that was being prayed, because sometimes it gets released. So that's when that idea of, right. all right, I remember that story of James Bartlett. If you weren't, if you didn't catch the sermon, it's the story of a sailor in 1892 that actually got swallowed by a whale 16 hours later um, when they, were, they had fully um, gutted the whale and were pulling the stomach out, they find him, right? And he's still alive. I can imagine. Dude, bleached oh, white. Um, a crazed lunatic for about just shy of three weeks um, till he can start to relay the story. And he tells the story of what it felt like. And there was a line in his description where he says, 
And he said the heat was so stifling inside that um, belly. But he says it was as if my vitality was being pulled from me. Mm-hmm. And I love old English. It's like as if, it's as if I was having life taken from me. And if you know anything about digestion, believe it or not, you're you're transferring energy from one thing to another right. thing, right? Yep. That there is a drawing that this man was going into the depths or the, the ebbs of death. And if you read Jonah, and I was just loving that, if you read it, um, and if you read Bartlett's account and you read Jonah, it's almost as if they wow. mirror, like, yeah. hey, life was being drawn out of me. I was being taken to the depths, and yet my God was there mm-hmm. with me, right? And Jonah's ability to almost keep his sanity in that moment is a testimony to God's goodness. So I am really glad that it had some resonance with people. Mm-hmm. But that said, I think the heart of the thing was still, uh, Jonah got the word when he was in the depth yeah. of that place, right? Because yeah. up until that point, Jonah, Jonah might have just he might have been turned back toward Nineveh, but he st- he he still didn't have anything worth saying, right? Yeah. Until that point, but it was in the whale that he got his word, and that's yeah. key, I think. Well, it was it was profound. I mean, not not everyone can relate to being swallowed by a whale, <laughs> but yeah. the the what Jonah was expressing while in the whale was this place of complete, like, there is zero hope for me. And I think that reality um, can be understood by many more to say, like, I've been in that place. And the one point you made was often for many of us, the word the Lord has for us to share with others comes at this place of of complete despair. You know, the prophetic word that Jonah had wasn't necessarily you're going to burn 40 days, but rather the reality of who God was and him being our salvation and our hope only, uh, which was which which he would have received or come to rather while in the the belly of the whale. And and that can be often for many of us in our darkest places, we discover the glory of Christ in a way that we would otherwise not have. That's right. And, And just to remind you all in chapter two, verse eight, it says part of that word that was coming to him was uh, and those who cling to worthless idols turn away from the love of their God. Yes, right. and, and it actually, in some translations, says the grace of their God. And I think that is the pure heart of what God was trying to get to the Ninevites. It's like, I know you're trying to kill the pain with something. I know you're trying to fill the cracks of life with worthless idols. Yeah. But I'm telling you, not turning to them, is it's not just sin. What, what's actually going on is you're turning away from my love, right? Mm-hmm. And the fact that I know what's the richest for you. What a wonderful word. But then we know, of course, he lost it on his three-day journey into Nineveh after being vomited out. But I do want to back up to something you said, Matt, and nail sure. this down. Like, I don't know how many of you ever hit rock bottom. And I don't think it's a prerequisite to have to hit rock bottom for mm-hmm. the Christian life. I just think that'd be a terrible way to view life because I think Jesus is oftentimes trying to protect us sure. from hitting oh, rock yeah. bottom yeah. or else he wouldn't be saying, hey, walk in my ways. I lay before you a blessing and a curse. In other words, the Lord doesn't want us to have rock bottom. But if you've ever reached it, right, and uh, whether something's been done to you or whether you've actually made mistakes that land you there, mm-hmm. um, it is a point of hopelessness, meaning you don't even feel you deserve the yeah. next breakthrough, right, the next opportunity. Um, and, I, and I just want to speak to that, to those of us that hit that place. Um, it is a time to, uh, at one level, you quit fighting. You let go of the bitterness. You let go of the victim stuff. And you actually say, speak, Lord, your servant's listening. And yeah. oftentimes, that is when you get a defining word, not just for your own life, but for mission, right? Mm-hmm. What Something for others in that moment. And I just want to highlight that. And I know that you tuned into it, Matt, from our previous conversation. But the fact that God releases identity through the even very mission of Jonah while he's there, yeah. I just wish he could have held on to it, right? Yeah. And it's unfortunate what bitterness can do to us. Yeah, and to your point then later, God will sovereignly continue to do what no. he intended to do regardless. Yeah, he wants know? to work with Jonah all he can, and we yep. see that because the story ends with him working with Jonah. Yep. But he's still, he has a heart for the Ninevites. He's going to get the job done, right? Yeah. Um, he'd prefer to do it through Jonah instead of in spite of him. Yeah, yeah. kind of a fun <laughs> thought experiment is like, did God need Jonah to... to um, yeah. to say that eight words, right? right. You know, um, in 40 days, this Nineveh yeah, is going to be overthrown. Uh, did he need Jonah to say that in order for the repentance to happen? It's, it's obviously how the story goes. But if Jonah really, I mean, yeah. anyway, you can do that with any story in the Bible. <laughs> exactly, the man. what if, I just have fun thinking about, you know, what would have happened because the, the, the point is well made. 
where this one sentence that he proclaims causes an entire city. It's one of the few prophets to that, turn. That, that is 100% effective. Right, and you have all of <laughs> Jeremiah's writings and-, and Isaiah, I, yep. uh, Hosea, you can be the story of chapter Hosea, Chapter upon man. chapter of just return to the Lord your uh, God and it's not, it's, you can't say it's not getting the job done, but it, like- right. You, You're right, because we're not, we're, we're not big enough, but here's the biggie. This isn't just such a bad sermon. Come on, this is D minus stuff, man. Yeah, right. yeah. It's not just such a bad sermon. I'll remind you what it was. 40 days and Nineveh shall be destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, and God's sovereignty falls on the phrase. So sometimes I just want to remind us that we sit and we believe for moves of God, we trust for moves of God, I believe we cultivate the discipline of what we've seen historically constitutes moves of God or leading up to it. I think that's all really important for us to do. But the beauty of this is, is that God is about God's own work in this yeah. world and is gonna get it done. I just wanna be a part of it. I simply don't want God to have to work in spite of me. Right. Right. And that's, it's exciting to team up. Like I get back to the creation account there with, with Adam. Team up with me and name in the animals, right? Let's have yeah. a good time. And that's yeah. that's where I want at Effort at Community Church, that we actually find joy in teaming with God, even if we look at it and go, well, he could do it a lot better in his sovereignty. I'm telling you, he would prefer to do it in an encounter with us that's right. than through an absolute move of sovereignty like he had yeah. to pull off with Jonah. Right? Which is which is how you end the, me end the message. Is your last point is God gives up on no one, even if you got a D minus. And, and there's a lot of hope in Jonah's account <laughs> yeah. uh, because you can be as, in the beginning stage, rebellious and running away from God as he was, mm -hmm. um, then have a, a an about face and return to the, the calling and the purpose to even then kind of misstep in the end and have the worst attitude while he's sitting under the tree. Yeah, that's and right. the, the worm's scent and, and all that that happens. Um, but there's hope in the fact that that God still longs, to your point, to work with his people. Like yeah. He's not about just zapping people and getting his job done. Um, he loves to be, for, he loves to call us into an abiding posture That's right. That's right. and to do the works of the kingdom. Um, and, and I think there's hope in Jonah's account that we can all relate to is the fact that he's not gonna give up on me even though I find myself in this position where I wanna run away That's right. or where I have a bad attitude that like he can still shape my heart, he can change me, and he can still use me uh, despite all the shortcomings. I feel like there's a lot of hope in that. Oh man, dude, you, Matt, you'll get me pumped. Like I believe we can never forget that the incarnation that God came in flesh is a commentary on how God wants to reach this world, right? He right. wants to reach, even if you think about his birth announcement, angels from the realms of glory come and sing, but the real people who are sent to celebrate it, to be there in the moment, are shepherds yeah. and wanderers who stare at stars from yep. hundreds of miles away, right? Yeah. So he brings it down to the king of glory is announced through people showing up and giving gifts and believing that something beautiful is gonna happen in the world. Yeah. I, 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 I often pray, oh God, thank you for using us. It, you could have done it so much better yourself, mm -hmm. <laughs> just showing up, glowing above the planet at 3,000 feet and speaking right. some mystical language. Right. But to use people like you and I, and then the yeah. Jonas, the D minuses. And I hope that is encouraging because usually when someone gets a D minus, uh, they shame keeps them from yeah. jumping back into it, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's something important to reflect on. We've all got a D minus at some point. Um, how did you pivot off of your D minus? Because mm -hmm. that is what the Bible refers to as a man or a woman of God. It's not so much that, you know, all ye like sheep have gone astray. Mm -hmm. It's who's going to ascend to the holy hill, right. you know, clean hands, pure hearts, who even swordered their own hurt but did yeah. not change. Yeah. Like, in other words, pivot off of that and God can still do something. Yeah. yeah, there's hope for all of us in this. Like, Shucks. it really comes down to the fact that, like, if, if we... If we just carry a posture of like, here am I, use me, here am I, lead me. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I love how God's relationship to us is always come and follow me, come and be with me where I am. He's never sending us off to go and do something so as to earn position with him, right. so as to earn his pleasure and joy and some trophy that yeah. he hands out. It's always, I have a calling and a purpose, so come walk with me That's right. and it will unfold. Oh, Matt, and if I could share one personal thing, we, we always have to be careful as people who have pulpit ministries or up front that we don't always assume something that's going on in our own life is the it's word for the whole community, yeah, exactly. right? Yeah. But there is one I want to submit to you that this sermon did to me. I'm in the midst of some discernment around something that's grown very intense and very heavy, near burdensome, how I've been carrying it. And this sermon reminded me, Jim, are you humble? Mm. Like, are you humble? 
because trust me, a humble heart does not miss the will of God, right? That's, yeah, that's like, the good. sovereignty of God protects the humble. So there are some of you that are in such complex situations now, and you can sit and little cliches don't work for you, but I just want to remind you, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up, right? Yeah. And, and that's one of the encouraging words in this is, we, uh, there are moments of intensity that humility will bring the breakthrough. Yeah. You don't need much more beyond that. So. That's so good. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good spot to, to wrap it up. Thank you, Jim. It's always good. Who's message. next? Kevin's next. Kevin's then Galen Burkholder. This is a yeah. good lineup on Jonah. Yeah. And are we doing it? Is anybody, is Jonah finishing with Galen or is that Galen's gonna, the last okay, one? Yeah, yeah. You better, don't blow it, Galen. Yeah, you better not. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh my word, as if Galen Burkholder can blow it. I feel like I need to, my soul needs a bath for even making that joke. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, but anyway, thank you for being with us here today. And yeah, we'll catch you at this weekend's services and then for our podcast next week. Looking forward to being with you again. God bless. Take care. Hey, thanks again for joining us today. We hope that you've been encouraged by listening and that you'll join us again next week. You can listen to previous episodes, find additional resources, and of course, learn more about us by visiting effortofcommunitychurch.com.